born in the war, bomb blew up a house and my father's brother got killed and my granny's house got blown up in um, in Manchester because we live near to the uh, railway factory. And so I got a bit of a, a grudge against, well I wouldn't have known about the grudge I got at that age but it would have been embedded into my subconscious, you know, like a grain of sand that really irritates me and, and as I grew older I couldn't see any sense in what they call civilization, the system in general, you know, and I, I still can't, and I, I'm sure many people today, having seen what the stupidity of the religions and the fact that we're destroying the planet, and not only that, we've been destroying the wildlife on this, this planet for many years now, with insecticides and things. My father and mother used to uh, enter into these dancing competitions at Blackpool Tower, and they won all of the awards for ballroom dancing, so you could say that I was sort of danced into the world with the bombs going off on one side and uh, the uh, ballroom one of the places we went to live at was called Denton where there was a beautiful lake with beautiful white swans on it and uh, instead of going to school I used to go to watch the white swans I could get more intelligence from the swans than I could from the school teachers one day I went and they'd actually filled that lake half full with rubbish old paint tins uh, telephone wires in different colours, you know, for the when they first invented and brought out telephones were installing them all over, so the scrap cable, paintings and everything like that. And I saw why have they done this? Why have the civilization with the only bit of beauty that was left in this area and the only wildlife that was left in this area, the only thing that could be colourful and sing nicely, like the birds and the beautiful songs, the songbirds, why did they kill them? Is this what you call progression? I thought. And I was only a young lad. And when I started asking the teachers, they used to say, well, God deemed it that way. And what God says is right. And I said, you bloody stupid git. Don't talk to me like that. That's stupidity. God is the sun, surely. God is what gives life. It creates. If there's no sun, nothing grows. That must be God. Now, we are all, all of us, you know, all, everyone, Every race of people throughout this world, we've all got the baggage, the malas, uh, as we call them in Brazil, but the suitcases, we carry weight with us. And what's that weight? It's the weight of the years, may it be thousands or hundreds, of our forefathers and the fears they've had and the things they've invented. So I've lived everywhere where I can learn something. That's been my aim in life to learn about why we're doing things and what makes us tick and what makes this world go round, yeah? And I've seen that uh, most of the people involved in it are destroying it out of making money. Making money so they can have a bigger house, a bigger door, a bigger bank and a bigger tank. So they can kill the others. Now, I can't really have any respect for this civilised society. I can't really see any sense in it whatsoever. There's some wise men come along, but they're usually the wise because they're saying what somebody else has written and they've retained it in the memory, not because they've lived it themselves. I saw a programme in 1968 on BBC called The Tribe That Hides From Man. And it was about this most beautiful people. They were called the Giant Indians, the Black Indians. And it showed a long shot of them peering from behind the, the bush and I said to myself I'd like to go meet those people I'd like to maybe get to know them very well because as I told you my life I never could quite understand or I didn't gel I didn't gel with the system you know so as they were also hiding here it comes the rain so I got my friends together and we drove to Turkey, which is exactly in the opposite direction. And I bought 89,000 puzzle rings. Now, as you can see, this is a ring. And it's a puzzle ring. See? And it breaks into four pieces. And I decided I was going to Brazil, but I didn't have any money, but I wanted to make a film. I knew I wanted to contact that tribe that hides from man and make a film and be with them in it because I could understand them hiding from civilization and religions and brainwashing and put clothes on and all the rest of it. So 
I stitched 2,000 of the puzzle rings on my clothes, like this. 2,000. And I got on the aeroplane. I got a student's fare, 300 pounds. I got some false papers saying I was a student, which I wasn't. Student of life, I am. And I got on a charter plane. When I got to Rio, I got off the plane, I got to the customs, it was a bit heavy. <laughs> and I was really jingling, you know, jingle jangle. And I got to the customs, he says, Oh, Kiki, eh? Well, who are you? I said, I'm the metal man going to the carnival. So I'm in the metal in the carnival. And I laughed. And I did that and I jangled and they all laughed. So I laughingly jangled and passed and didn't pay the customs duty, which was at that particular time 300% on an item of luxury. Jewelry was 300%. Each puzzle ring cost me 4p. And I sold each one for $20, that's five pounds. That was good profit, wasn't it? I sold them within a week on the beach, which gave me $20,000 uh, profit. And with that, you see it's back together again there. Lovely, isn't it? With that, I opened my first boutique called Freedom. It was a head shop. Head shop meaning I sold everything to do with things to do with people that think. That's why it's called a head shop. So it's not easy to shoot a film in the jungle. I needed money for that. We set off downriver. We went down. Uh, everybody said, don't go to the Chukahamai Indians because the Chukahamai Indians, they're the giant black Indians, and don't go near their villages because they've just killed two white men. They've cut their heads off and they've got their heads on stakes outside the village. Even the other Indian tribes, and I said, there's many of them, uh, each of them, because we visited all the tribes, we visited about 15 different tribes before, we set up down river. I said, don't go near Chukahamai. Even the Indians don't go near them because they say they're still cannibals. They're afraid of them. So I knew that I had, for some reason, knew that I had to go to those people. I decided we'd go down anyway, two canoes tied together. We'd take about 10 days. We couldn't land any time going down that river because it was, it was the rainy season and the, the jungles were flooded. And all of the animals that were dangerous, like the snakes and the scorpions and other them, they're in the treetops. And the treetops was all the land that was left because the land, the basic land, was underwater. So we couldn't stop. Maybe there was an occasional sand spit, but that was usually covered in crocodiles, or as they call them there, yellow belly alligators, jacare. So off we went, down river. And I started chanting. Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hari. That's my dad's name, by the way, Hari. And as we went past each village going down the river, the Indians on the shore would start chanting with us. And then the next tribe would start chanting with us. And then when we started to get to the tribes, they were chanting before we even got there, because they run faster than the canoe goes down the river. So the message of Hari Krishna peace and love was going on before us. When we arrived at the Chukahamai village it was 10 o'clock at night and it was rainy and it was windy and we pulled into the banks and everybody in the canoe was absolutely, we had one Indian guide with us and he was trying to hide at the back of the canoe under the cover you know, he was scared. And I looked up at the bank which is about 10 foot high and there's about 20 Indians all painted, all black painted black and red with great big lip discs covering the face, you know? They call them batokas, lip disc batoka. And of course, um, no other clothes, no, no, just that, you know. Black. And they're all looking there and they're all stood there. There was two with guns and the rest were with bows and arrows. And they're pointing the bows and arrows at us, right? And as the, as the canoe hit, I stood up, but as the canoe hit, I fell forward. And as I fell forward, I hit the gas bottle, because we had a gas bottle. We had to cook our food in the dinghy as we were travelling, yeah? yeah? So we would shoot the ducks and the alligators and cut the tail off, and then I would put them in this pan, and we had a gas ring and a gas bottle, which I took with us, and we'd boil the food up, and that we had our food. And the water, we drank straight from the river, because it was so pure in those days. And when we landed, I went forward to, to get the gas bottle, because it could have exploded if a bullet had hit it, yeah, yeah or something like that. And as I, I fell over, and as I fell over, I landed in the mud, and Chief Rowney, who I, I now know him to be the biggest of them, came forward laughing his head off, 
yeah. looked down at me and said, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and then all of the Indians started singing Hare Krishna. Well, that's the, the, the message, isn't it, really? You see, music is the best thing to stop violence. And if you can hear everybody singing together, then you get people into a happy state of mind instead of a violent state of mind. There you I'll just take this off to yeah. show my tribal markings, right? Inside the eye. <laughs> and at the side of the eye. And this is the pencil I make my notes with, you see. I've always got that with me. Anyway, tribal markings. What? This is a symbol that I've noticed that you use. We call it a logo tipo. It's your trademark. And it is Cocapello. Uh, we call him Hokipa. And he's the native dancer because he is the guy that leads the people musically, happily, spiritually, dancingly. You could call him the Pied Piper of Hamelin of the Amazon. Well, he hopefully, he's not leading them to certain doom, though. No, oh no. But he only did that because, you know, the capitalistic system. These people, by the way, let me just explain something now at this stage while we're here. There are as many tribes in the Amazon. There's 250 different languages. There are many different cultures. They come from India, they come from Mongolia, China, and varied other places that have been wiped out on this, maybe even from Atlantica, Atlantis. The, the people, you know, have disappeared, but they're there, and they're called Indians. South America, hopefully.